Hello everyone, this is Flammy and welcome back. We're here with Jorge Yao once again. He is still the number one player in Clash of Clans, up above 4,000 trophies. If you did not catch any of the previous interviews, this is my sixth interview with Jorge. In the previous ones, we covered all sorts of topics from high level strategy and tactics, to gem usage, and sort of his progression as a character, rising up the leaderboards. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the new units, of Dark Elixir, including some other changes such as Wizard Dragons and Wallbreaker AI. In the next episode, we are going to be talking about upcoming changes that are coming out in the next few weeks to Clash of Clans. If you've never heard about them, stay tuned and get your full fill here. How are you doing, Jorge? Great, how are you doing? I'm still doing great, and you know what, I'm really excited to talk about all this stuff. We have an uh, update that was not too long ago. We have update coming out in not too long. It's looking like a good time to be playing Clash of Clans. Oh, certainly is, certainly is. Lots of new content, and very excited about, very excited about it. So, Dark Elixir units. So, we clearly got three new ones very recently, and these are only for higher level players, but, uh, what does this sort of indicate to you in terms of the direction they're going? They have a Dark Elixir barracks with ten slots, but only three units. What do you think about this? So, they have a Dark Elixir barracks with ten slots and only three available right now, so they're going to make new ones coming to, uh, in the future that focus more on Dark Elixir, so it's interesting to see what, what they're going to release. Do you think this is a good change for high-level players? Before, in some of the interviews, you had mentioned how you were maxed out at uh, 200,000 Dark Elixir with nothing to spend it on. Yeah, I think this was a good start. However, I do think the units that they released uh, in this previous update aren't really utilized in high-level gameplay. And it's right. It's not so because um, the the units are costly. It's just the units are not as strong as what uh, the normal elixir troops would would uh, bring to the table. So that's a very interesting observation right there. When they were first announced, it wasn't known if uh, how they would sort of balance them. So maybe they'd be adding a new dark. Uh, army camp. Clearly that didn't happen. Uh, because they didn't, that means we clearly are going to have to balance them against the rest of our army composition. And uh, I certainly think that was a good decision to maintain the balance of attacking power, but it sounds like at the high levels at least that just taking up that much supply for these new units isn't worth it. Is that true? Correct. And that's true for even maxing out these units to level 5. Correct. Uh, and that takes a it takes a good amount. Like I haven't upgraded any mine at all because that costs like ten thousand dark elixir for right. just the minions going up to level two. How much does it cost overall, roughly? Um, I think the last update, I, I really don't have a figure to be honest. But it was it, it wasn't as costly as uh, previous updates, but it um, it does cost a, a significant a significant amount of dark elixir to max out the all three troops. And for players at the top, this of course means spending gems to buy the Dark Elixir and then spending more gems to speed up the research. So that gets pretty expensive pretty fast because Dark Elixir costs more than normal Elixir to buy, of course. Right. Now, for the units themselves, do you have any thoughts on the sort of the direction they're going? All these units, the Minion being the little flying, harassing unit, the Hog Rider being the specialty jumping unit, and the Valkyrie with its splash spinning attack, all of them seem to be sort of more exotic than our normal units. Any thoughts on those? Yeah, uh, I think that they're taking a really cool direction to the new units that they're releasing. Um, it's more so, I think... Uh, mythological creatures or you know special units that you would never really think of or you know i'm think mr t would be glad to have you yeah, to him t. as a mythological <laughs> unit uh, <laughs> he's quite t. the fanciful character mr t <laughs> uh anything else in the new dark elixir units before we move on to some of the other changes uh not that i can think of uh but I am excited for future updates where they will be releasing new Dark Elixir troops. How maybe a Dark Dragon or a Dark Pekka in the future? Who knows? It will definitely be interesting to see you with seven open slots. Um, and remember, these are the first four units. Uh, okay. Compared to the ones which are going to come, I'm sure that these guys are considered the infantry. And if you right. think infantry takes eight supply, oh man, I can't wait to see what the last one's going to be. 200 <laughs> supply units, maybe? What are you thinking? <laughs> Yeah, maybe. Maybe they'll have to increase the army size, cam uh, army camps as well, uh, um, to accommodate for for all these housing space. <laughs> Boss mode character, I want it. Yes. <laughs> 
All right, next up on the list, we have Wallbreaker AI changes. So those of you who are not aware, Wallbreakers recently got an AI change which pretty much completely reworked how they work in game. So first off, they no longer attack walls, but first they look for buildings behind walls. If you haven't checked it out, go check out my Wallbreaker AI video. I put out a new one about two weeks ago, which a lot of players have found useful trying to figure out how to use the new ones. How did the new Wallbreaker AI affect high level play? Uh, so they the increase in the housing space also increase the amount of walls they actually break. So what you see now in a lot of high level gameplay is where use where bases used to have double layer walls, they would leave a gap in between each layer so that wall breakers have to actually travel to the next set of walls in order to break them. Um, because with this new update, if you have two wall, two layered walls, a wall breaker can break through both layers with just one, uh, with, with one explosion. So that's uh, one significant thing that I've noticed uh, with the new change. You definitely pointed out uh, two points right there, which are pretty critical to the new wall breakers. One, which is the two supply cost up from one supply before the updates, and the other is their larger detonation radius. Previously, they would only attack two walls, which are very close to them, and now they'll attack uh, a 3x3 three three circle around them, if you can imagine that. So that means they can attack walls too deep, which is uh, a pretty big change. So I'm not really surprised to hear that happening at the high levels, but uh, it certainly must have affected uh, base design. Correct. Now, the last thing, which was pretty significant as well in this update, was the Wizards and the Dragons. Both of them were sort of uh, magical units, throwing out their fireballs and lightning spells, depending on which level they're upgraded to. But in this last update, they got a splash damage boost. Now, how significant would you think this was to the new, to high-level players? I think this was huge, for both on the P.E.K.K.A. player side, who mainly uses the wizards, and uh, on the dragon player side, who uses the dragons uh, um, to attack their, the clan castle. Uh, with the new spread damage, what you see for the dragon side is when archers come out or defenses troops come out from opponent's clan castle, a dragon can take out a group of archers in one uh, flame rather than just one archer at a time, which significantly increases the chances of you um, getting a one star or two star, you know, winning the battle. So that's a huge, significant increase. Um, so this is referencing a couple of things which are sort of the standard practice of high-level players before this last update. So the first of that would be Clan Castle would be filled with primarily archers, is that correct? Right. So this is definitely going to be very effective against that with their splash damage dealing with multiple infantry, especially when they're grouped up together, much right. more effectively. Now another thing to be dealing with is the most effective defense against dragons, or I guess really any unit, is distraction. So how does this uh, splash play into like distraction? So the the distraction uh, aspect of it in terms of the gameplay, um, clan castles now you'll see a mixture of troops, people experimenting in terms of um, maybe putting a giant in there where you know the splash damage. It won't affect, you know, a large crowd of units. It's just one giant, so um, the rest of the units can can attack and distract as well. So you do see a, a combination of, of different defensive units, um, just people trying them out. But there really hasn't been a combination that I've seen that's the most effective. Uh, it's just, you know, different combinations. So in the case of giants, though, if you're attacking with a... A dragon only army, won't the giant just stay right in the middle next to the clan castle as soon as it deploys? Yeah, uh, so uh, just to clarify a little bit on that, it's uh, a giant mixed with a, a mixture of, you know, barbarians or archers, or mainly archers probably, um, so that when the archers die from the dragon splash damage, the, the dragons will still float to the, the stagnant giant that's just sitting at the clan castle. Um, so usually the clan castle is closer into the middle with all the air defenses. So if your dragon is floating to the clan castle uh, without attacking anything, their defense uh, units are just going to gun down your, your dragons on the way. 
Alright then, so you said that this was probably the most significant change, and uh, you sort of explained why with the splash damage, but how does this actually show itself in terms of strategies and how players use it? So, they're less focused now on the clan castle, so previously I, my strategy is still using four lightnings as spells, however the fourth lightning can be used um, on other things rather than the clan castle de depending on whether or not the clan castle uh, gets, you know, the troops get killed in time uh, before my dragons do. However, it does it does free up an extra spell for people to utilize if they don't care uh, too much about the clan castle or if they don't want that insurance there. So now I see uh, some players using a combination of three lightning, one rage, and all dragons um, instead of four lightning. So they'll they'll take out one air defense with three lightning and not worry about the clan castle troops at all uh, due to the splash damage of the dragons and then use the last rage to after they killed all the clan castle troops with the dragons they'll use the last rage to hopefully get them a two star or you know take out the town hall so that sounds like a pretty amazing attack buff for players at the top trophy counts now right. you don't even have to even worry about the clan castle and just like throw away that extra lightning and replace it with something like a rage Wow, that's a huge change for you guys. Right. Some some elect to not use it. I, I choose not to use the, the fourth one as rage. I like the insurance just in case the clan castle behaves differently or not as expected. I'd like to have that extra lightning just to as an insurance policy. But um, the more risk takers who want to do the two stars or you know go for the three stars, they'll, they'll incorporate the rage instead of the fourth lightning really interesting all right so with this change you talked about how they were used differently that is the dragons used differently when attacking how does it change a sort of standard army composition are you seeing more dragons out there these days oh totally um i've seen in majority of the top level players have switched over to using dragons and rightfully so it's an effective strategy and it works um it's shown to have a level of success so it, it's uh, it's evident in the top players as well. You see them. You see all their camps full, filled with dragons now instead of Pekka's. So when we did our first interview uh, several months back now at this point, uh, you had sort of been a little on the outer curve of in terms of using dragons. It seemed like a lot of players were using Pekka's at that point, or Pekka's as it may be. Uh, is that switched over so you think the majority were using Pekka's then and the majority using dragons now? Correct. I would say in terms of the top 10 players in the world, I would say um, 9 out of 10 of them use dragons. Wow. Uh, that's particularly interesting because during that time frame of a couple months, they also added the new level of air defense, which I would have thought would shut down on the dragons a lot. But I guess if you're still just taking them out with lightnings, maybe right. not. Yeah, one thing uh, with the air defense is everyone... With the lightning, they weren't sure if the three lightning would actually take out one air defense with the new added hit points, but it actually it still works. So um, in concept, that's what kept the strategy going is that the three lightning still do take out one air defense even with the the up, uh, new updated new level. Now here's an interesting question: What if the new level of air defense had enough health that it would take four lightnings to take it out? That it would drastically change the game uh, dynamics. I would probably end up switching to using Pekka's <laughs> at that point, or you know, just try to figure out a different strategy. But that would it, that would change the game dynamics drastically for for dragon users, which at this point is a lot of people. Right. All right then. So going on to another update, not quite this last one, a bit more recent. They recently added some new walls, so everyone got 25 new walls to play around with. Right. So how did this affect gameplay at the top levels? So that actually plays very well into supporting more dragon players because those 25 walls are essentially useless against people attacking with dragons. So we're using them as uh, using dragons as a smarter choice even more so now that there's 25 extra walls where Pekka's have to deal with that and dragons don't. So already encouraging the uh, existing motion of change, which was in favor of dragons already, just pushing that along even harder. Right. Um, Alright, anything else about this last update you want to talk about? 
No. Um, I think that the Super Soul did an awesome job making the Hog Rider Mr. T looking, so that was pretty cool. <laughs> I guess we can talk about that for a minute, actually. That's a good point. So you explained, you just sort of said briefly that they weren't really used at top levels. Uh, can you sort of explain why this is other than just stats? Um, I, th- I think it really just has to do with stats, it, the housing space versus the hit points. A lot of what I saw it, when the release first came out was people analyzing you know is it worth it to have x amount of valkyries compared to one pekka or is it you know comparing to hit points damage and everything like that so people experimenting within the first couple hours of using the units and these are all high level players and the feedback that i got was essentially they would rather use their own um previous arm you know army uh camp units rather than the new dark elixir ones Sort of surprising there. Uh, do you think that the best way to change that would be not like adjusting the things like training time and cost that don't really affect you? You don't, you don't really take them in consideration. So maybe lowering the supply requirements so you can use them for effectively yeah, yeah. cheaper, have more of them. I think so. But uh, on the flip side too, if with the regular elixir troops, uh, I know you mentioned you know these are kind of like the minions, the little you know the three units that they're out now for the dark elixir. Are, are kind of like the entry units for, for this dark, new Dark Barrack um, feature in the game. So if you kind of compare that to the, the current Elixir troops, you know, the standard, you know, Barbarian, Archer, Goblins, the, the, the three staples or Giants, um, they're not heavily used in high-level gameplay either in terms of actual attacking. Um, you know, with P.E.K.K.A. players, it's mainly focused on Wizards, P.E.K.K.A.s, um, maybe you'll see a few giants, but wall breakers, and then a combination of spells. With dragons, you'll see all dragons, and maybe some archers. But um, so those units aren't very utilized either. So I, I didn't really expect these units to be have a significant impact on high level gameplay. But it's just cool to to see the progression and where where they're going to take it next. That's a I, really neat point. Um, I hadn't really thought of it that way. Obviously, I made the connection before about how these first ones, the Minion, the Hog Rider, and the Valkyrie, are effectively the infantry of the Dark Elixir units. They're the cheap right. guys. Uh, I hadn't really made the connection, though, that you don't really use the cheap guys when you're attacking already. I mean, of course, you have them there in supporting roles, but they're not the meat of your army, so I guess it would probably be a bit of a stretch to imagine that the new Dark Elixir infantry would be the meat of your army now. Right. Now, so, but I do expect... Uh, dark elixir troops, uh, the new ones, you know, with a, 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 a additional, I think, how many slots you said, seven or eight, I forget. But with the additional slots where, you know, in the new tr- additional seven in the dark barracks. Yeah, correct. With those additional seven, I, I do believe that with future updates, dark elixir troops are, are going to be uh, a staple in, in high level attack uh, gameplay. <laughs> well, awesome. That sounds great to look forward to. And before we wrap this up, do you have anything last to say? No, uh, this was great to uh, attend the event. Thanks to Supercell for for hosting it in San Francisco, where I could actually attend. Um, Pretty lucky on your part. I wish I could have made it. But you know what, guys? In the next episode, which will be out very soon, we're going to be talking about all sorts of sneak peeks that Supercell showed off at this event. So, just to give you a little bit of a taste... We have the Golem, a new Dark Elixir unit that is the most health of any unit in the game. It beats the Pika by a mile in terms of health. We have a new league system that's going to change completely how players of all levels attack, especially mid to low level trophy count players. We have a small balloon change, we have Teslas, we have a clan castle message, we have the possible of an increased weekly award in terms of gems, we might have new spells, we might have a jump spell change, and you know what? We will reveal approximately how long to this update is in, t- in that next video. Stay tuned, guys. Thank you very much for watching. You can subscribe to my channel for that when it comes out very soon. You can also follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Jorge, do you have any of these sort of social media platforms if you want to stay in touch with you? Yes, uh, feel free to uh, contact me on Twitter as well. I have a new Twitter account at JorgeYao87. Feel free to tweet me and follow me as well. I will be linking all of those in the description so you can go find Jorge's Twitter down there. Lickety split easy. Alright guys, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for tuning in and thank you Jorge for being here once again. Thank you for having me, Flammy. Always a, always a pleasure. Alright guys, have a great day.